guys. So I was sitting at my desk getting frustrated trying to come up with a video idea uh, that I could create for my YouTube channel this week. Gold star for consistency. And so doing what I normally do when I can't think of a video uh, to create, I started browsing my list of video ideas for what felt like the hundredth freaking time. Oh, come on. There has to be something I can make a video about. Finally, I thought of one that would be perfect for this current time in which most of us are stuck inside our homes doing much of nothing. You see, it's something that most of us tend to neglect, but given our extended staycation for the unforeseeable future, may be the perfect time to actually sit down and finally take care of. When I first started my photography and videography journey, I quickly realized that just throwing all my photos and videos in a single folder made it very hard to ever actually find anything later on. You see, I needed a system. And so today I wanna to share with you guys the methods that I've developed that has worked for me uh, throughout the years and keeping all my files organized. I'm sure I learned most of this stuff from other people, but I basically took different parts from different people, put it all together into a system that works for me, and today we'll be discussing both my organization when it comes to the actual folder a structure on my hard drive, as well as my organization that that leads to in Lightroom if you do photo edit it. We'll also be talking about how I back up everything in case of a system failure. All right, Jackson, roll the intro. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today, as I said, we are talking about organization and backup of your media, both your photos and video files. Before we jump in, if you're part of the family, type hashtag OMG in the comments below. Also, if you are new here, thanks so much for stopping by and make sure you hit the red subscribe button below and also ring the bell next to it to be notified when we post other videos like this one. Also, as a way of saying thanks, don't forget to smash that like button. It helps me out tremendously. Thank you. All right, with all the formalities out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing I wanna do is discuss with you guys how I structure my folders to make sure everything stays nice and organized for finding clips later in time. In order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the computer here uh, so I can show you exactly how my setup looks instead of just trying to explain it here like this. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the computer. All right, guys, now that we're inside the computer, let me go ahead and open up my pictures folder as well as my video folder. And then we're going to go ahead and dive into the folder structure. So the first thing you're going to notice is that things are listed either by an event like Becca's grandma's birthday party or by a location like Champion, Ohio, which is the city that we live in. Most of the time uh, when I'm looking for older footage, I'm never going to remember an exact date. So I find that the way that I'm going to remember it is through a memory and I'm either going to remember the location or I'm going to remember what the event was, something like Halloween or Christmas or a location can be something as specific as Mosquito Lake, which is a location by my house that I go to all the time, or it can be San Francisco, California, which I visited one time. But again, rarely am I going to remember an exact date. Uh, so I found the best right way to structure my initial folder setup is again by events or by a location. So if we go ahead and dive into one of these folders, like here we'll take New York City, for example, uh, you'll notice that you're then presented by folders which have the years. So New York City I've been to in 2016, 2018, and in 2019. Uh, if we then dive into the years folder, you'll see that it's broken up by months. Uh, so here you can see I went in September and I also went into, uh, into New York City in December. If we go into the December folder, you'll see that that's as far down personally as I break down my folder structures. If you wanted, you could break it down to be even more specific. Uh, you could break it down into weeks and then you could break it down into days even. So I can tell you all of the photos in the folder of December here were most likely taken on different days throughout our trip there. But again, I have never seen the need of needing to be specific to the point of days. I think that would just uh, 
make it more difficult to access the, your files quickly. I will occasionally put a folder of an event inside of a location folder, but I never put a location inside of an event folder. What I mean by that is if there was an event the media was from, but I wanted the media grouped by location because I felt that would be easier to remember in the future, I will group it under the location, but in a folder with the event name instead of placing the event folder in the main folder. This just helps keep your main folder from getting too cluttered where you can't quickly get to something and start clicking in, where you're not just scrolling forever up and down your list of folders. Because you're still, as you can see, going to have plenty of folders uh, if you stay in photography and videography for any length of time. An example of this would be I could place this dog park Halloween inside the mosquito because that was an event I could place that inside of the mosquito lake location uh, since that's where it was however I've been to the dog park enough that most likely if I'm trying to find the dog's pictures I'm gonna look under dog park Halloween and remember that but you get the idea and then the other thing I want to mention is that my location doesn't just have to be a city and state or a state, uh, but it can be more specific, especially if it's places uh, you visit around like your own area uh, multiple times per year to take photos or video. For example, if I lived in New York City, in my, I might have a separate folder for each of the different areas inside of New York City, whether that's Brooklyn, Chinatown, or any of the other areas. Whereas here, where I live, since I don't visit New York City that often, I just have the one New York City folder. However, here where I live, there's a lake by my house called Mosquito Lake that I visit multiple times per year during the different seasons, sometimes in the daytime, sometimes at nighttime for astrophotography. So I have a specific folder for Mosquito Lake, even though I already have a folder for Champion, Ohio, which is where the lake is located. So again, you can get as specific as you want with your locations. It doesn't just have to be a city and state combo. Now for my videos folder, I do the exact same thing. However, there's two additions. In this folder on top of the location and event folders, uh, I have a YouTube's videos folder where I simply back up all of my material for and the completed YouTube videos uh, to this folder here. I then have a vlogs folder for any vlogs that I create for YouTube specifically, and inside of here, it then goes by dates, just like it did in the photography uh, folders. And that's how I organize the actual folder structure on my computers. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and jump into Lightroom. So as you can see, when you open up Lightroom, and this is not a tutorial video on how to use Lightroom, but once you have your folder structure set up this way, as you add new folders and then new uh, photos to those folders and import them into your Lightroom, it's gonna cause your Lightroom to basically be categorized the exact same way for finding pictures. So you can here see on the left, I have my pictures backup folder, and then all of those same event and location folders are listed here. And they're broken down by the dates just like they would be in the folder structure. So that's what makes this folder structure to me such a powerful tool. And then the only other thing that I do inside of Lightroom specifically is I create a smart collection by clicking create smart collection. And then I have it set so that any photo in Lightroom that has a rating of five stars, so is greater than or equal to five stars, and then I create that, it, it puts that into a collection anytime I mark a photo with five stars that I can visit anytime to see what I then consider to be my favorite photos that I've ever taken. So that way I don't have to constantly go through over time. Like right now I have 
you know, 13,600 photos loaded into Lightroom, it makes it easy for me to quickly find my favorite ones throughout the years. Uh, I then also have a share to phone a collection, which this is not a smart collection, just a normal, that I can then add photos to quickly that I want to be able to use with Lightroom CC on my phone. Uh, and then I also have a social media folder, which is basically the same thing as my favorites folder. Uh, however, it's a separate one because it's a, not a smart collection. It's a normal collection, which means I can then sync it with Lightroom CC again to my phone. Uh, and then I just basically drag and drop all the files that are inside the my favorites and add them to the social media. That way I have the photos that I can use to post the social media. And that's how I organize my folder structures and Lightroom and the organization that you get in Lightroom automatically by doing that folder structuring. All right, so now let's go ahead and close out of Lightroom and then we're gonna discuss about how I organize my backups and how I actually make sure everything is backed up properly. So I use two different backup services. I use OneDrive by Microsoft because I have a subscription to their service anyways uh, because of office and work and stuff. Um, and then I also use Google's backup and sync. Most people don't know, but Google will back up, not at the highest resolution, but they will back up all of your videos at 1080p that are not over, I think, 10 gigabytes. And they will back up all of your photos in a pretty high quality, at least for any kind of normal sharing you would need to do, uh, but not raw, for free, like completely for free. You can download this program and do that. So those are the two services that I use to back up my photos and videos. I use Google uh, Backup and Sync for all of my videos and all of my photos. And then I use OneDrive just for the full res raw files of my photos. I use both for photos. That way if one service is ever down and I need to pull the file from one of the services, I can still do so and I can do so immediately. I can't do this for my videos uh, because again, OneDrive is a paid service. And with video files, you're talking about terabytes and terabytes and terabytes of data. Uh, and it's just not feasible for me to be able to afford to pay uh, for that kind of space on a cloud service. Uh, it would cost way too much. However, that's why uh, even though I'm using two separate online services to back up my data, uh, I also back everything up in full resolution on two separate external hard drives. Both of these drives contain the exact uh, same data. And then what happens is once these drives are full, I swap them out for two new four terabyte drives, an A and a B drive, a master and a slave. Uh, and then I take those full drives and I store one here at my house and then I store the other at my dad's house uh, in case we were to ever have a fire, flood, or some other act of God happen at our house or at my parents' house, in which case I have a backup of the full res of video and photos uh, at some location, at least with some distance to hopefully allow for redundancy. Uh, this still isn't foolproof as I do back up all of my data to these external hard drives once per month on the first of every month. That's when I do my backups takes me like 30 minutes. I don't think that's too much time uh, to have to spend backing up versus if I was trying to do it weekly or daily and spending 30 minutes each time on a daily basis, hell no, or even on a weekly basis just doesn't work for me. So what that means is if I have my computer that I'm recording this on right now that we're here on screen with, if this computer was to crash on say the 26th of a month, that means everything from the first of that month till the 26th of that month, I'm going to lose. Uh, so again, you have to kind of make that decision of how much time you want to invest in making sure all your stuff is backed up uh, and how large of a window you're allowing uh, of material to be lost. I figure worst comes to worst if something happens during that month that I lose the data. Uh, most of those videos I could probably remake uh, pretty easily and pretty quickly. All right, and that is how I back up all of my data. So you can see having the folders already for the pictures back up and then the folder already for, we go back in here to my D drive, my video backup folder. Then when I do my backups to the external hard drives, it's just, 
you know, because everything's structured so nicely, it's just copy this pictures folder, copy this video folder, and I'm done. And again, that is how I organize and back up everything to kind of work in sync. And I think that kind of gives you the best redundancy uh, for the least amount of time invested. All right, guys, I hope this has helped you out uh, in thinking about how you organize and back up your photos and videos. And if you have a different solution that you think might be better, uh, please leave a comment down in the description below. Uh, share it with all of us. That way, maybe uh, it's something that'll work for somebody else because ultimately the best solution is the one that works best for you. Again, as a way of saying thanks, I would appreciate it if you smash that like button. It helps me out tremendously. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you subscribe by hitting the red subscribe button below. And then don't forget to ring the bell next to it to be notified when I post new videos. And until next time, peace out, everybody. Uh -huh.